Hi guys, Mike for Baker here. So we are doing a loaf of sourdough. So this is the night before. So before you go to bed, when you're making this, I want you to put in 50 grams of your starter in, into a pint glass. So using pint glasses is the way forward these days. So put in 50 grams of starter. Assume you've made your starter and it's good. If you haven't made your starter, obviously go to the starter creation videos. So 50 grams of starter and then 50 grams of strong white flour and then 50 grams of rye flour. But you can obviously, you, you can mess around with different flours and everything. This is just the one I'm suggesting. This is a very good um, ingredient list which I give you. Now once you've put the flours in with the starter, put in 130 grams of refined water. So make sure it's not straight from a tap, because it's straight from a tap, it will kill the starter, which is not good. You don't want to kill the starter. Okay, so once that is in, you literally just stir it, stir it all up, and then cover it once it's stirred. So if you come up a little, little bit closer, you can have a look at the consistency. So it's fairly runny, but it's not too liquidy. Okay, so once it's like that, just get the rest of it off. And then you want to cover it either by using a tissue or something, or I, I use my dough scraper. I just cover it there. Leave that until the morning. So it's 10 o'clock now. I, I will go to it at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and it will have raised up. And because it's quite warm at the moment, it, it probably will have overflown. But we will see what it looks like in the morning. And from then, I will tell you the next step, and we will get you making sourdough. Okay, guys, sleep well. All right, guys, good morning. So this is eight hours later, and as you can see, the starter has overflowed. It's pouring out of the pint glass. So I will show you the next step. Okay guys, what you want to do now is get your starter, look at this starter bubbling away, and put in 40 grams of starter into your little Petri dish bowl type thing. Again, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit over. And then from there, put in 15 grams of strong white flour. Maybe there. And 15 grams of rye flour. Also, again, it doesn't really matter if, if, if you don't, for example, have the rye flour, use maybe 30 grams of strong white, or start using um, maybe some uh, wholemeal flour, or, I mean, there's just so many different flours you can use, as long as there's gluten in the flour. Okay, now once you've got the flours in, you need to put in 30 grams of refined water. So let's put that in now. That's good. And then just mix it all up. And then cover it again back with the... Uh, I'll cover it with, with the dough scraper and then leave it for roughly about four hours it will rise predominantly it will probably rise to the top so I will show you when it's ready to be used for the next stage uh, you'll see what it looks like and obviously when it's warmer as it is at the moment it rises quicker so in the winter it would take about four hours but maybe this will take a couple of hours but I'll show you what it's like in a couple of hours okay okay guys let's have a look at oh look at that the leaven has risen almost to the top and it's still bubbling away. So that is that is one live leaven which we're going to be adding to all the flour. So I will show you all the next steps. Okay guys, so I've shown you the leaven. You, you saw the close up, this is it. Now I want you to put it into 500 grams worth of flour. Now the flour can be a mixture of, of any different ratio of different flours. I have used, for example, 300 grams of whole white, 150 grams of uh, wholemeal, strong wholemeal, so it's strong white and strong wholemeal, 
and 50 grams of rye flour. Obviously, play around. Do, do uh, like, I, like I said in, in the clip earlier, spelt. Use spelt instead of rye. That's really good. It's got a little bit more uh, gluten in spelt. Does rye, rye sort of lacks a bit of gluten. That's why I'm not using as much, but it's incredible the way it gives some flavors. Now, once you have got your leaven ready, I want you to put it into your 500 grams of flour. So we're putting it in. It's all in. Now once you put, put it in, your 500 grams, you want to put in 400 grams or 400 milliliters, however you like to say it, of water. Now the water, as I always say, it needs to be distilled. It can't be the chlorine stuff you get out of the tap because chlorine kills starter. Okay, so either use bottled water or take it out of the tap like I did with this stuff like four hours before and then the chlorine will dissipate. Okay, so we're now putting in 400 grams, milliliters of water. Now try to be as exact as you can with this. I mean, I've, I've gone over it very little bit, but that's fine, that's fine. And now, you just stir. Stir it in, fold it in, brush it in. And then once you have finished all the stirring and the folding and the brushing, you need to let it sit for one hour. And while you let it sit, you need to put on, put over the top, a drying up cloth and then let it sit for one hour and then in one hour's time I will show you the next step and the next step is very very important because it helps with all of the, uh, the gluten bonds and everything in it and it gives it a whole new life okay? and you'll also notice in one hour's time the difference between how this is now notice how it's just just a bit stodgy to how it is how, how it sort of starts basically almost elasticating together, okay? So remember, put a towel on it and leave it for one hour and I'll see you in one hour. Okay guys, the first hour is up and what we do next, here it is. Now, like, like I just said earlier, I don't know what just flew in there. Like I said earlier, the consistency of the dough is gonna be completely different, just look at Look at how stretchy it is now compared to what it was before that blobbling it was before. And this is all because of the, the uh, starter and the way the gluten bonds are just creating this amazing, amazing magicalness. Okay, so what are you doing now? You are putting salt in. You're putting 10 grams of salt into the starter. So it's important you're putting 10 grams of salt in now because if you put it in before, the two would, I mean, there are scientific reasons. I'm not going to tell you the exact scientific reasons because I don't want to bore you because obviously I know them. But anyway, there's scientific reasons for putting a salt in now and it makes a massive difference. So I'm gonna put in 10 grams of salt. Again, it doesn't matter if you are a little bit too over, but that, that one, oh, it's gone to 11 there. A, a friend of mine, he, uh, and then just stir, I'm just saying, a friend of mine, I, I gave him the, uh, the measurements and he decided that he preferred 20 grams of salt. Don't put 20 grams of salt in. I don't know why he did that, but he just thinks that was good. Anyway, right, so this is now stirred up and in half an hour, we're gonna come back to me and then stretch and fold happens, okay? So in half an hour, I will see you again. So again, you need to cover and I will see you in half an hour. Okay guys, half an hour is up, and now we are doing stretch and fold time. So what I want you to do is get yourself a little bowl, fill it with hot water. I've already done this. And then what you need to do is stretch and fold. So dip your hand in the hot water, push it down into the dough, pull it up and into the middle and across. And then do exactly the same, a little bit further around until you've done the whole thing, stretching and folding around the whole of the dough. And roughly, if you're doing quite large um, sort of spaces apart, you need to do it around about eight times. Okay, and there. 
And then what you need to do, cover it again. Once covered, I will see you in half an hour. Okay guys, are we ready for the second stretch and fold? And don't think I could have just told you to uh, stretch and fold three times because every single time I gave you another little bit of wisdom or a funny joke. So, should we do a joke? First of all, stretch and fold and then wait for the joke. Okay, stretch and fold exactly the same again. Just put your hand in the hot water and then bottom of the dough and then just stretch and fold all the way around. Obviously making sure you're stretching, grasping the bottom and putting it into the middle. Grasping the bottom, pulling into the middle, stretching and folding around. Here we go, three, four, almost there. And then, once you've finished it, remember to put the cloth back on. So are we ready for the joke? Okay, I would say, got, got, got one. oh yeah, what did the fish say when he swam into a wall? Uh, Damn. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Now if you laugh and you think it's very, very funny, obviously like this page and subscribe. And even if you don't think it's funny, like and subscribe, because I really want to get everyone learning how to make sourdough and learning about the Mindful Baker, because it's all, it, you know, there's lots more other things other than just sourdough and other than uh, the pizza I do, and lots of other things. Anyway, subscribe, like, paste, share and everything. And I will see you in half an hour for the final stretch and fold. Hey guys, so we're ready for the final stretch and fold. You've done this twice, this is the third time. Make sure you've still got some warm water, I've just filled it up again so it's nice and warm. Then obviously place your hand in the bottom, stretch down to the bottom and then fold it over the top. Grasp, grasping the bottom obviously, stretching and folding all the way around. And like I said in the very first time around, do it around about seven or eight times. And then once you've done it seven or eight times, no longer will you be covering it with the cloth. You're just going to leave it out now. You're going to leave this out for the air to do its work. It's looking good. Okay, so leave it out for the air to do its work and instead of waiting half an hour this time, you're going to wait 70 minutes. So I will see you in 70 minutes. That's one hour, 10 minutes. Just to, you know, show you how good I am at math. Now, one extra thing, because obviously we ended on a joke last time and hopefully you've uh, subscribed. If that joke wasn't good enough, one more. Okay, you ready? What did Sushi A say to Sushi B? Sushi A, Sushi B. Wasabi! <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe not so funny. But anyway, guys, subscribe, share, and get this going around because, well, I mean, the whole point of this channel is to show people how to not only bake, but using mindfulness as well. Obviously, I'm integrating mindfulness with it all and just showing people good times and how mindfulness can actually be used to help people have fulfilling, enlightening lives. But obviously, cooking and uh, baking are, are part of the process. So guys, I will see you in 70 minutes. Take care. Okay guys, so you've left it 70 minutes. Now, this is the important bit. Well, not as important as all the other bits. Everything is as important as each other. Okay, so what you want to do, make sure you've got lots of flour here. It's a flour hands, and you want to scoop the whole of the dough onto a floured surface. And once it's on this floured surface, make sure every last bit's out. Cover it with flour. And then you just want to fold it over itself once and twice. And then mold it into a mound. Once it's in the mound, and you're happy with it, leave it like this for 15 minutes, and I will see you in 15 minutes. All right guys, top tip. So you're going to need a, a proving basket for the, when you finish the next bit of rolling step. Here's my proving basket. Obviously if you don't have a proving basket, which you probably won't, because most people don't when they start off baking, all you're gonna need is a sieve, metal sieve like this, a washing up cloth, and then push the washing up cloth down and then you want to just scatter loads of flour on top. I mean quite a lot of flour just so that it's, the dough won't stick to it when it's done. But that's what you need to do. So obviously when I put my dough into my proving basket, this is what you will be putting it into. A sieve with a drying up cloth on top covered in flour. Okay? Okay guys, and this is the final bit of 
pressing and folding we will need to do today. So flour your dough and then get a dough scraper. If you don't have a dough scraper, use the back of a spatula or just something, something which is nice, flat and hard. And then what you want to do is just flatten your dough. Come a bit closer to see the flattening going on here. Once you have flattened it into a nice, well, flat shape, we'll sure call it. You want to turn one side over onto itself and then turn the opposite side over onto itself and then flatten it again on top of that. And then the side you want to fold into it and then flatten in and then the other side, flatten it in. And when it's like that, you need to just get all sides and just, you're effectively kind of scooping up but using, using the dough scraper to just give it shape. And once you've done that, you will have it in a lovely mound, a little bit more flour on top if you feel it sticking to your hands. And then as soon as it's like that, put it into the proving basket, just like that. And now that needs to be left for two hours. Okay, two hours before you put it in the fridge. I will show you putting it in the fridge in two hours time, just so you remember to do it. But that's very important because if you don't put it in the fridge, it will overproof. And if it overproofs when you when you uh, bake it, it won't rise. And that's that's obviously very detrimental to baking your own bread. So guys, I will see you in two hours. Okay guys, this is the easiest task I'm gonna set you. All you need to do is put it in the fridge. But first of all, just look how much it's risen. Hope you can see, like, I mean, this thing is is just, ballooning and this now it will keep rising if we don't put it in the fridge so that's why we're putting it in the fridge it will now cool down so just like you put the starter in the fridge to uh, to sleep this is going to sleep and we're going to leave it in there for 12 hours and in 12 hours time I will set you all the tasks for baking it and then literally there's another sort of 45 minutes of work and then you'll have your own sourdough loaf so guys I will see you tomorrow bye bye Okay, good morning guys. This is the day that you bake your loaf of sourdough. So I'm actually showing you two different ways of doing it. I, I can do them both at the same time, so that's fine. So on the right we have a casserole, which is the way I've, I've always done it. And on the left we have an open tin. So when, the, when you use an open tin, you need to put some boiling water in uh, beforehand. But I'll be showing you all of that. So basically th those two things. And then one hour before you need to put the oven on, just so everything gets heat. You need to put the oven on and put the... Uh, the oven on full, there we go, and then put the baking stuff in, and there we go, I will see you in one hour. Okay guys, after 55 minutes, so before the hour is up, this is when you're baking it in the tray, you need to put boiling water in a tray underneath, okay, so here we go, I've got a boiling water. This is obviously not worrying about doing it in the Le Creuset, the Dutch oven type thing. This is about when you're doing it in the tin, the open tin. Okay, so now I'll leave that for another five minutes. And I'll see you in five. Okay guys, so you put the water in. Now let's take the bread out of the oven, out of the fridge even. Bread out of the fridge. Now you'll notice it has risen even though it's been in the fridge for quite some time. I'm doing two loaves today, just so you can see how I do it in the tin, the open tin, and in the Dutch oven. Right, what you need to do, and this is very important, the scoring part, so if you could come up and see what I'm doing. So when you're scoring your loaves, you need to go deep. Not deep enough right the way to the bottom, but you still need to go fairly deep. And flour, you need lots of flour and and then put them in the oven. 
So take your steam. So put this in like that. If it doesn't go in correctly, you just zoom it around a bit. That one. And then this one, go onto a tray. And then put it both into the oven. Now you need to set the timer for 20 minutes. And in 20 minutes I will show you your next step. Okay guys, okay guys, 20 minutes is up. And what you need to do, take the lid off. Come on, have a look quickly. Just take the lid off there. Notice that they're going well. You don't need to empty the water. So effectively taking the lid off is the same as emptying the water for the casserole. And then you now turn it down about 10 degrees. Put it to 220, it was on 230 before. And then put it in, put the alarm on for 23 minutes. And I will show you the baked loaf at the end. And it will all be done ready, guys. It's so close. Okay, guys, it's ready, it's ready. Oh my goodness, come over, come over. Look at these amazing loaves. So, our loaves of sourdough are ready, guys. I've given you all of the details, I've given you all the know how. All you need to do now is follow the instructions to a T, and you will bake loaves like these. Oh, they're beautiful. Hard crust, soft in the middle, perfect. Guys, good luck, and I will uh, please send me all your pictures and also subscribe and tell all of your friends to join this. So, so it's subscribing, sharing, everything, and send me pictures of your loaves, because I want to see more. Guys, thanks so much. Good baking, happy baking, take care.